Hello, and welcome to the Art of Selling Online Courses. We're here to share winning strategies and secret hacks from top performers in the online course industry. My name is John Ainsworth, and today's guest, known as the Ambassador of Joy, is Barry Shaw. Barry is a mental health activist, philanthropist, multi-patent holding entrepreneur, speaker, author, podcaster, and former quadriplegic who is now swimming around the world. After a rare disease paralyzed Barry from the neck down, He created the Joy of Living Institute, which is a platform that teaches people to live in joy no matter the situation. The Keep Smiling movement that has reached multiple celebrities and distributed millions of Keep Smiling cards and Change Bowl, which is a philanthropic platform featured in Oprah's magazine. He also wrote a best-selling book, The Joy of Living, How to Slay Stress and Be Happy. Today, we're gonna talk about Barry's background in business and his experience and why joy is so important for business and how you can live stress-free. Before we start learning from Barry, I want to mention our sponsor, and today's sponsor is my company, Data Driven Marketing. We help online course creators increase their revenue two to five times through strategic funnel optimization. If you want to know how much more you could be making and get a plan of what you need to do and how to do it, go to datadrivenmarketing.co slash calculator, fill in about 10 questions, and we're going to create for you a personalized Profit Increase Report. We'll send it through to you. Barry, welcome to the show, man. Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved immortal beings and good looking people around the world. Now, John, how can I make the categorical statement that all the thousands and tens of thousands of people that will be watching and listening to this are all good looking? Because by definition, if they tuned in to listen to your show of how to grow themselves in their business, it means they're always looking for the good. That's a good looking person looking for and finding the good in life. All right. Hopefully everybody's engaged now and is, uh, is switched on after that amazing intro. So can you give everybody a bit of background about you? Uh, what's your background in, in business? We kind of touched on it very quickly in the introduction. Delight and a pleasure, first of all, to be here and sharing with all the people who really care about building and growing and utilizing their business of a force of good in the world. I'm going to begin with one very important idea. And that is the word business. Now, you notice, John, everybody knows how to spell it, B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S, right? But here's the important thing to notice. The U comes before the I in business. See, when business is oriented towards giving value or thinking about the other and what it is you can bring to the business world, then it doesn't matter what your techniques are, you'll learn how to grow. That's the whole purpose of what data-driven marketing is all about. Thank you, John, for enabling people to use it. But you're gonna know that you're delivering value to others and then you reap the benefit. That's the genius of the word business and how, thank God I've succeeded in my business career. Uh, As John mentioned, the nice introduction that was written by my wife, thank you for reading that, has to do with the fact that I have several multi-million dollar exits to public companies, and I hold three US patents. The important thing though is not that, it's really about how does one integrate a joyous attitude in life with business? Because sometimes, matter of fact, oftentimes I've schooled many thousands of people who are entrepreneurs and people who run large businesses. They seem to be disparate, almost like oil and water. They're two different things. And yet, once I've shown people that when you integrate them together, then that's when the magic happens. That's when that spark of goodness grows and business becomes fun, beneficial, and money is flowing in because you're working with the law of attraction. There's two basic ways to run a business, John. I think you'll agree. One is going out and hustling and pushing and pulling and very fine. You know, we used to call that go-getters, right? All true. And you can sometimes succeed, oftentimes. The greater way is to be what we call a go-giver and recognize that by giving value and maximizing value and attracting people using the law of attraction. Now, when people hear the word law, they sometimes think, oh my gosh, the police, you know, that sound, or the court or something, and they shrink. Well, in our world, law stands for love and wisdom. When you apply love and wisdom to your business, you are now using that to attract people. 
So I deal with what we call the three fundamentals of life. These three fundamentals are number one, life, your life has purpose. Number two, the good number two, when you lead a purpose-driven life, you go mad. Now mad stands for make a difference. You lead a purpose-driven life, you make a difference in the world, right? And number three is to uncover the power and the secrets of everyday words and terms. Simple example. Right now, this is being carried throughout the world by the internet. And if you ask anybody, what does WWW stand for? Invariably, it has to do with the internet. Factually speaking, they're correct, John. But in our world, the world of the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, WWW stands for what a wonderful world. And what a, is a word, right? What a wonderful world. So from now on, everybody, when you see WWW, you say, what did that guy say? What a wonderful world. That's what the internet is all about. The ability to have no barriers, no limits. We all talk about it, right? Be a no limit person and grow. Well, the internet is the exact Mode, the exact medium to have that happen. And when you use these three fundamentals of living a life of purpose, making a difference, uncovering the power and the secrets of everyday words and terms, guess what happens? You'll be happier, healthier, and wealthier. And I can prove it. I guarantee it. People who use my program, and we have an online course, of course, and we use data-driven marketing. Thank you, John. And also I have a free gift for everybody that is, you can go to my website and get it, which is the beginning of my course, absolutely free. And it's wonderful. Tens of thousands of people have used it throughout the world. But use these three fundamentals. And now you're beginning to utilize this most powerful word. And what does joy stand for? Journey of you. Journey of you. When you begin to work in the field, either beginning your own business or working in a larger corporation where you're the entrepreneurial part who's tasked with growing a particular part of the business online, whatever it is, when you bring yourself to it, guess what happens? You become the best version of you. And when you're the best you, you will by definition succeed. I'm telling you, you can't go wrong. Use the right techniques, but put in your best you and add in what makes you unique and special. Remember, you have purpose. You make a difference in the world. Find joy and you're going to experience prosperity as if you had dreamed about it. That's the kind of world that we live in and how we teach people to integrate joy into business. Why do you think joy is so important for business? We touched on it a little bit there, but I want to dig into that a little bit deeper because we've, you've talked about things as uh, the importance of it and, and how we need to have joy and how it's going to help you to be healthier. But like, why? What's the practical? Is there a practical side to it in terms of making more money? Or is it just because you'll have a way better time while running your business? Like, what's the angle on this? So first of all, thank you for the question. <laughs> because it's the natural process of what we just said. Hey, Barry, sure, that all sounds very good, but, 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 but. Okay, so John just gave you two pieces of the, the same pie, the same puzzle. Is it a practical, you'll make more money, you'll be more successful, or is it just you'll have more fun doing it? So the answer is, simple answer is yes. The more complex answer is no. Because... What does why stand for? Why in my world, remember we unpack the simple everyday term stands for winners help wisely. The who is winners help others and winners help others win. So you got the how, the why and the who. And it's really interesting, John, that again, I deal with people and by the way, it happens to be more men than women Women are much more capable of understanding and utilizing and <clears throat> internalizing the information and the transformation that we enable with our program. Men tend to resist it, except, and here's the exception, once they realize that the shift is very small. See, what we call shift happens. Now, i tell you something, John. Most people, when they see the word shift, for some reason, they drop the F and the other stuff happens. So you got to be very careful when you pronounce it. Shift happens. It's a small shift. I'm going to give a, an example. 
great example. You live in London and a lot of people that you deal with are English or certainly English speaking, but everybody in the world knows of a man named Richard Branson. Sir Richard Branson. If there is a poster boy, child, man, person for the ability to run large enterprises in a most joyful way, it's Richard Branson. And I've had the privilege of speaking with him, meeting with him. I have a number of friends that are actually quite close to him, been on Necker Island a couple of times and such. He is willing and open to tell people, when I was growing up, I wasn't Richard Branson, the multi-billionaire. <laughs> you know, I struggled, but I struggled with happiness, with joy. Mm -hmm. He had role models of joyous living as well as role models of successful business. And he integrated those because he recognized early on, John, that if you're going to just be in the path of business, making money, go out there and nose to the grindstone. You hear all these terms, nose to the grindstone, that type of thing. That kind of thinking becomes limiting. Mm. And, and you get into this place called stress. Mm -hmm. I'd like to unpack stress for a while. Can we do that? Sure. This is where it goes to you're very, very practical. The tip, I'm going to give three tips and tools that are so practical that when you utilize them, you will find that the shift happens. Remember those F and Fs, the shift will happen. So let's talk about stress. Stress is an acronym. Well, let me give you a setup. <laughs> In the world today, coming out of COVID and all the things that happened over the past couple of years, a lot of stuff has happened to people, right? Mm -hmm. I have people say, ah, do you know what's going on? I, I lost my house. We could lose my, my job. My cousin committed suicide. The kids are going crazy. They're not in school and the countries are falling apart. We've got war and all this stuff going on. That's called stress. Mm -hmm. Stress can stand for stomach turning reality enabling self-sabotage. All those things we just said are probably true. You may, you lost your job, maybe lose a house. Cousin did commit suicide. Okay, what do you do about it? Mm -hmm. How you respond in any given situation is really the key to success in life. I think you'd agree. I think everybody in business would agree. Mm -hmm. How you respond, stuff happens. Shift happens, even without the F, right? Mm -hmm. What do you do to respond? So the six most important words that I urge people to consider and internalize and utilize and leverage are choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Choice, not chance, determines your destiny. So now with that mindset, let's take a look at the same word, stress. Stress stands for stomach turning reality. Yes, you lost a job, maybe lose the house, cause commit suicide, kids are going crazy, got war in the world, things happen. Enabling self success. You hear that? Stress is stomach turning reality, enabling self success. What am I going to do? How am I going to respond? If I respond in a very positive, purposeful, powerful, pleasant way by learning certain techniques, which we'll teach in the next few minutes. I can literally utilize this situation and leverage it for benefit. It's what in banking, by the way, we call stress tests. You know this, right? In the banking system, when you want to root out and make sure that there's no fraud or you're not being attacked by the cyber war warfare and such like that, you stress test the system. You do it in banking. I urge people that I work with in companies larger and smaller to stress test their businesses by having what we call, so you remember in school, fire drills, you practice, the ability to be able to respond and to know what to do, where to go, how to respond in a given, not react, how to mm. respond. Reactions are somewhat knee jerk. Mm -hmm. So you go back to your question, why is this so important? because it talks to the fundamental aspect of the human condition. The human condition. Imagine the following. Mm. Standing up in the morning, hale and hearty, able to leave tall buildings in a single bound, and that evening being in the hospital totally, completely paralyzed. 
not an automobile accident, not a spinal injury, a rare disease, which I never heard of the day before, John, took over mm -hmm. my body and rendered me what's called a quadriplegic. Nothing on my body moved from my neck down, completely paralyzed. Mm -hmm. 144 days in hospital, two years in a hospital bed in my own home. I couldn't turn over by myself. Four years in wheelchair. I had braces on both my legs, my hips to my ankles. That was progress. Thank God today I'm able to be vertical and ambulatory with the help of a seven foot walking wand. I can't walk up a stair by myself. I can't walk up a curb by myself. I have helped 12 hours a day, seven days a week. But you hear my voice, positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant. It's all because of one word, one word. It's not joy, even though it's the result of that. The mm. word is smile. Mm. Smile, yes. Smile stands for seeing miracles in life every day seeing miracles in life every day. I just recently spoke, again, human beings, you know, because we're getting through the COVID and the masquerade is over. I spoke to a, a large crowd, 5,200 plus people in the audience, telling the story about Barry Shore and about joy and such, and seeing miracles in life. People raising their hands and saying, hey, Barry Shore, Barry Shore, I've been up for hours where I haven't seen any miracles challenging me, right? And I say, well, I asked them, are you here? Can you hear? Can you stand still? I can't do that. Can you walk? I can barely do that. You have water to drink. You have food to eat. You have a place to sleep. You have family, you have friends. Every single one of those is a miracle job. And what's the proof? Simplest proof. A million people didn't get out of bed this morning. You know why? They died. So by definition, if you're watching or listening, you have an obligation to live life to the full. And if you're going to build a business and it's going to bring value and you're going to make money and you want to be a giver in this life, then you want to infuse that with as much joy. Remember, joy, journey of you, as much joy as you possibly can, because then everything tastes better, smells better, looks better, is better. You hear all that? It's practical. It, you can literally see it as a bottom line. What is your joy factor? But before I stop, I got to tell you a funny story. My eight-year-old niece comes over to me a few weeks ago, and she says, Uncle Barry, Uncle Barry, can we spell smile, S-M-I-E-L? I thought about smile, smile. It sounds the same. Why not? I asked her, how come? Because she said then it would stand for seeing miracles in everyday life out of an eight-year-old. But what was she doing? She was creating the kind of world she wants to live in and create is a beautiful acronym, causing rethinking, enabling all to excel, rethinking. And this is where I'm going to say back to you, John, and a challenge, but a positive challenge. Mm. Isn't this what you do with data-driven marketing? You challenge people to rethink what they're doing and to do it with a shift. And with that shift, you can 2x, 5x, 10x more, but they need to learn the techniques. Isn't that correct? In order to be able to shift, they have to rethink what they're doing. Isn't that correct? Yeah, absolutely. But most people have got a perspective on what's possible and what the way the world is. And they're missing the opportunity of what could be done, how it could work. And so a big part of our work is helping people to see how the world could be, what the potential is, that, that already exists, that they can't see it, they don't believe it. It's almost too good. It's like if I tell them what they could do, if I believe it and then it turns out not to be true, I'll be so sad that I'm better off not believing it in the first place. Okay, so what you just said is so important. We're going to reframe it and say it again. I believe, I want to do this, yeah, okay. And there's that voice inside called self-talk that says, uh, hold on there, please, for a minute. I mean, you know, don't go crazy because, you know, you've tried before and it's failed. And, you know, these things don't really work. He's just trying to sell me something. That's a self-talk, is it not? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, let's unpack it. Remember the three rules, the three fundamentals that Barry Shaw works with. And it's I've helped tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Again, small shift. It's the acronym for self-talk. Purpose. Go mad, make a difference, and uncover the power and the secrets of everyday words and terms. Self-talk stands for recognizing that you are a soul, experiencing life fully, teaching always love and kindness. Now, simple example. So 
we've all been on airplanes and thank God more and more today, you know, hopefully without even mask pretty soon. Mm. <laughs> you just told me you came back from Kenya. You know, I don't know. I, I'm presuming you had to wear a mask there and back on the airplane and it's, but you don't, we're not going to eat anymore. But we know that the person who stands in the front of the airplane before you take off tells us that it's a change in cabin pressure, that there'll be something coming down overhead, right? And what you're supposed to do, that's going to help you breathe. Now, if you're traveling with a child or somebody acting like a child, what do you do? So intu intuitively, people think, well, gee, if I'm with a child, I'm going to put the mask on the child first, right? And then me, because it's my child. But what do they teach you in the front of the plane? Counterintuitive. Put the mask on you first, breathe, and now put it on the child or the person that needs help that's next to you. Mm -hmm. Why? Because only when you are calm, aware, and capable can you help someone else. You really want to run your business? You really want to bring value? You want to help? People be flocking to you when you use the techniques, the practical tools that John teaches, and what I'm going to share with you for free right now. You will internalize, and that self-talk, remember the following. John, I've had this happen numbers of times mm -hmm. when I'm talking with, with uh, large crowds. I ask people, if uh, one of your best friends came over to you and said, I need to confide in you, I need your help. Would you make time? Well, of course. <laughs> Who doesn't, right? It's your best friend. Come over, make time, and they sit there, and they tell you intimate stuff. And you're not thinking right away, gee, I'm going to check my phone or I'm going to do something else. You want to help the person. And you're not going to glibly give an answer when they ask you how you're going to say, you know, this is really something. This is really I need to think about this. Let me let me think about it. Let me talk about it. And then you discuss it, right? That's how you treat a good friend. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, guess what? Is that how we treat ourselves? Oftentimes, when you do something that you think is in quotation marks, foolish or silly, or that, you know, well, you know, you, you could have done better. You didn't do We're our own harshest critic. Is it not true? Mm -hmm. So self-talk is the most important speech you'll ever hear. Yeah, Barry Shaw, great guy. I like that attitude. Doesn't matter what I say. Doesn't matter what John says. It's what you say. So if you're self-talk, remember, you're a soul experiencing life fully, teaching always love and kindness. When you go into a process, in this case, John's data-driven marketing, you want my course, of learning how to live in joy daily, no matter the circumstances, you can have a free taste, just go to the website. You go in teaching yourself love and kindness. You will succeed. I guarantee it. Guarantee mm. you will succeed. If you can think of it, conceive of it, believe it, you'll achieve it. This, it it's true. It's your self-talk that will be the determining factor. I've done this, John, with some people, multi-billionaires, and some people who are multi-hundred dollar heirs, and yet became <laughs> very wealthy. It's self-talk that is the essence of what's going to make the difference in your life. Am I correct on that, John? Mm, absolutely yeah that's the genius of it that's where the stress comes in stomach turning reality enabling self-success mm. how you respond can i give over some practical tips and tools to help people get through the uh the process that sounds outstanding yeah let's do it okay we're going to do three three practical things that you can do right away you don't need any fancy clothes you don't need an app you don't need to buy anything Three practical tips and tools. Number one, number one is breathe. Breathe. Of course I'm breathing. Hello, Barry Shore. I'm listening to this. I may be even enjoying it. I'm, of course I'm breathing. That's called shallow breathing. That's enough to keep you alive. What we're talking about is what we call deep breathing. Uh, it's really diaphragmatic breathing. But the interesting thing, John, is that most people can't spell diaphragm. They don't know where it is in your body. So I call it tummy breathing. When you learn to do tummy breathing, you're going to literally shift your whole ability in life and your demeanor. You become calm and aware. Tummy breathing means breathing in through your nose, what we call a conscious loving breath, in through your nose, deep into your tummy, and then letting it out slowly through your mouth. And you do this four times. 
Now, each one of those processes takes anywhere of eight seconds, 12 seconds. So in the process of four times, 48 seconds, I think most people can afford that. And you'll do that and you'll find that after four deep tummy breaths, you'll be much more calm and aware. Mm. You'll be able to handle situations much better. And you do this twice per day, once before noon, once afternoon, twice per day, 11 days in a row. By the 12th day of the practice, you'll be calm and aware, conscious of your surroundings. You'll be seeing miracles in life every day, or as my niece says, seeing miracles everyday life. And that will enable you. But if you ever miss a session or a day, use your self-talk to begin again, teaching yourself love and kindness, just begin again. You wanna get 11 days in a row, once before noon, once afternoon. By the 12th day, you'll be wanting to do it and you won't miss again because mm -hmm. you, you recognize the benefit to your whole being. That's number one. Number two is to what we call practice gratitude. Mm -hmm. Gratitude is that emotion with the longest shelf life. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people, by the way, don't like gratitude. You know why? Because it means you're obligated. Somebody does, does something nice for you, you feel obligated to repay. People don't like debts and obligations. People like the idea of rights rather than responsibilities. Well, if you're going to be in business, remember the you before the I, you want to be in the position of gratitude. You want people to be grateful to you. Mm -hmm. You want to be grateful to others. You want to practice. So how do you practice? What's the best way? You're going to use the two most powerful words in the English language three times a day, every single day for the rest of your life, consciously and conscientiously. And these two words are, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank stands for to harmonize and network kindness. To harmonize and network kindness. The Dalai Lama has been quoted as saying, I'd read in his writings, be kind whenever possible. And as he says, it's always possible. <laughs> so imagine you walk into your coffee shop, and you order your fancy latte, you sit down, so it brings it to you. You say, thank you. You walk in the coffee shop, you order a fancy latte, you sit down, a couple of minutes goes by, nobody brings it, you go to the counter, they say, oh, I'm sorry, we forgot, we're busy, and you will bring it. You sit down, a couple of minutes go by, somebody brings it, you still say, thank you. You're walking out of the coffee shop, it's raining out, especially in London, it's raining out, somebody holds the door open for you. You say, thank you. You're walking out of the coffee shop, it's raining, somebody slams the door on you. You say, thank you. You're in traffic, you're late for an appointment, somebody cuts you off, you say, thank you. You get up in the middle of the night, you stub your toe and it hurts. You say, thank you. To harmonize and network kindness. When you do this, you're helping yourself, your family, your friends, and all living beings, because the process of practicing gratitude has no barrier. It's mm -hmm. like good business, like you said, John. You do what you do when you put it out there. It has no barrier. It will succeed and multiply and grow. That's the purpose of that, practicing gratitude. Mm -hmm. And the third practical tip and tool is learn to love dog poop. Did Barry Shaw say dog poop? Yes, learn to love dog poop. Now, everybody knows what dog poop is. I don't have to explain it, right? Oh, good. So remember, yeah. We talked about the three fundamentals of life. Life has purpose, go mad, go make a difference, and unlock the power and the secrets of everyday words and terms. Dog poop stands for doing of good, power of one person. When you recognize that your business is a force for good in the world, that you are a force for good in the world. That doing of good is part of your very being. And you recognize the power of one person. If you knew what power you have when you think in good and you speak in good and you act in good, you would never have, never, a negative thought, emotion. <laughs> because it's like, you just said, you know something, I think I'm going to take $1,000 out of my pocket and throw it to the wind. That's what a negative thought is. <laughs> Who goes around doing that? <laughs> Nobody. When you recognize your value in the world, 
-hmm. and that by doing of good, the power of one person reaching out to another, to another, to another, to another, to another, yes, we create what we call a tsunami of goodness in the world. And it will push aside the negativity. It will benefit everybody. So learn to love dog poop. I like that, John. All right. Here's where I think we are so far. We've covered a lot or you've, you've talked us through a lot. So we've understood why joy is so important in business and how people can deal with stress through three different techniques. And those were breathing, gratitude, and appreciating dog poop. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what question have I not asked you? I should have done so far. Uh, I can think the question that you should be asking that most people are listening around and say, hey, Barry Shore, you seem like a nice guy. Come on, is this real? Have you ever had a bad day? So that's the question. We'll go, Barry, have you ever had a bad day? So the simple no, answer Barry, is, John, you know, bad day? <laughs> so the simple answer is no. And yes, let's, okay. Am I human? Of course. But I can tell you, so I am 73 chronologically. I haven't mm -hmm. had a bad day in at least 61 years that I'm aware of. At least. Why? Have I had difficult times, moments in a day, an hour or two? Absolutely. But what we've done and I've learned because I had great models growing up, great models of how to live positively, purposely, powerfully, and pleasantly, that time when it was really tough and I was upset and everything. Okay. That can be for 10 minutes, an hour, two hours. Whatever. Okay. I'm not going to self-indulge. I'm not going to let it change my whole day. Mm. In the morning, you missed your train. The car doesn't start. I mean, any number of things can happen, right? You can name them and listen. It's happened to everybody. Oh my gosh. You know, the, the, the whole day is ruined. The whole day is ruined. Hello. <laughs> it's an event. Remember our most important aspect of stress, stomach mm -hmm. turning reality, enabling self-success, how you respond in any given situation will determine where you're going and who you are and what your destiny is. Stuff happens, shift happens without the F, but if you enable it to be shift happening, and you recognize it, sometimes you can take a situation that seems really dire and say, ha, 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 ha. what did that crazy guy, Barry Shore was on John's show say? And you start laughing mm. because we know study after study after study for decades, people who were right in the study, oh, something terrible was the worst thing that ever happened. This realize at a certain period of time, whether it was a day, a week, two months, a year, years later, that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. So we, everybody's experienced this, right? So no, I've never, I haven't had a bad day in 61 years. And I'm encouraging everybody who's listening, and you will too. You don't have bad days. You can have tough times. But don't let it spoil your entire day. Don't let it live on your face. Mm. If you allow mood to dominate you, you'll see the following. You know what mood spelled backwards is, John? What's mood spelled backwards? Doom. That's it, baby. Oh, I'm in a mood. Well, yeah. Well, that's dooming to you, to your family, your friends, and all living beings. Why do that? It's mm. like throwing money away. It's literally self-destructive. That's not who you are. You are here to be of benefit in the world. You're a dog poop lover. A lot of the things that, that you're talking about is a very different way of describing them, but it's a very similar underlying concept to Stoicism. I read the Daily Stoic every day for I think two or three years now. And it's, it's about how do you, what is it that's under your control and what is it that's not under your control? And how do you focus on the things that are under your control and let everything else go? Which sounds hypothetically quite simple and straightforward but it's very it's not very easy to do always you know first of all it's not always that easy to figure out which of the things that you can control and you can't and then secondly it's hard to let go of the ones that you can't control and then thirdly it's actually quite hard sometimes to focus on the things that you can control but 
if you think about it, if you focus on stuff that you can't control, it's insane. Like, why would you do that? Like, what's Wait a minute, the- John, look at what you just said. You're right. That is a de- another definition of insanity. Mm. You said yeah. it beautifully. Yeah. Let, let's go back to our stress issue. It, it's mm. very interesting, and I urge everybody to do this. Use a piece of paper. I think most of the people listening know what a piece of paper still is. Blank piece of paper, and use a writing instrument, a pen or a pencil, and make a circle and divide it into three. It's going to look like the peace sign. Fine, you have three pieces. The three stressors in life always will be, always have been, and they're there. No matter COVID, it doesn't matter what's going on. The three stressors in life are money, relationships, and health, correct? Mm-hmm. Those are the three things that are stressing everybody's life at some point. So like you just said, let's analyze what is it that I have control over and what I don't have control over. And if you focus in these three areas, what I we call one of my books called Reframing the Art of Living, then you can begin to look at and determine what it is you actually have some control over and things that are outside of you. And, mm. and do it in the, each of these areas, money, relationships, and health. I mean, talk about, remember my story, standing up in the morning, completely healthy, and that night, the next day, totally paralyzed. Mm. Years. Mm. Uh, do I have control of my health at that point? Well, I would say no. Did it let me, did it freak me out? Did I go mad? And Yes, make a difference. In other words, reframing. So you're right, John, absolutely. And if you think you're going to control the things that you can't and you use your energy on that, well, the simple answer is back to your question. Why? Just ask yourself, why would I do that? Mm. And I'm telling you, in the executive suites of some of the biggest names in the world, you'd know them. I remember one meeting, there were three others, a man and two women, top-notch people in, in every sense of the word. And yet when we do this simple exercise, they're breaking out laughing because they're recognizing that, oh yeah, I'm focusing on stuff that's beyond my control and it and why am I letting it get to me? Yeah. So it's, the ability to be self-deprecating, laughing with oneself and at oneself in a, in a most positive, purposeful, powerful, pleasant way, really goes along. And so you've, you said it so beautifully, John, in far fewer words than I use. So thank you for that. Don't go insane. Mm. <laughs> mentioned about a free introductory course. What's the website address people should go to to get that? Oh, good. Let's talk about this. Yeah. So I urge everybody go to barryshore.com, B-A-R-R-Y-S-H-O-R-E.com. I would have said www, but everybody's so hip these days, you don't even need to say that anymore. And of course, we know www stands for what a wonderful world. Go there and you'll break down the homepage, click and get the free class. It's several videos of me discussing some of the 11 strategies that are involved in my book, The Joy of Living, How to Slay Stress and Be Happy. And you'll get a more taste of what we do and how we do it. And if you'll learn a lot in just those three videos. You want more, you can certainly sign up for more. And that, of course, we uh, urge you to do that because it's to your benefit. So we're only here to serve. Also, I have uh, available the now, most of your audience, I believe, is outside the United States, but those, but those people who do listen in the United States, uh, you can go on the site barryshore.com slash book, and the physical book is available, as well as the ebook at 22% discount for the year 22, and no sales tax, no shipping and handling. Uh, again, outside the United States would be ebook, inside the United States is a physical book or ebook if you wish. And it really works well because it talks about, again, the 11 strategies for learning to live in joy daily, no matter the circumstances. And it will help make a difference in your business. Remember, everything we talk about here is for you to become happier, healthier, and wealthier. Who doesn't want that? 
They're integrative processes. It's not one to the other. They work in tandem and they exponentially help one another, happier, healthier, and wealthier is a wonderful way to live. So I urge everybody to go to the site and do that. Thanks, Barry. For everybody listening, if you found the interview useful and you want to get future episodes, please subscribe wherever you listened. And we'll see you next time. Before we sign off, can we do a quick, I want to do a quick blessing for everybody and a quick hug. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so hug stands for heartfelt, unlimited giving. So I'm going to give John a hug in front of thousands of people. One, two, three. And our blessing is go forth, live exuberantly, spread the seeds of joy, happiness, peace, and love. Go mad. Go make a difference.